Welcome back to DXB Today. We are so happy to have you here with us as tonight we are focusing on a successful leader. What does it take to be one? And what they call a CEO mindset. What is it and how do we get there? All that and let's see what else is coming up. Amy heads down to Duangdi at the link at Wan Zabil, offering an exquisite blend of heritage, Thai delicacies, and sustainably sourced ingredients as well. Looks yummy. That does look good. And we've got talented performer Alina Postrova joining us in the studio tonight. Now, there's going to be a lot of talk about business, leadership, um, success. Have you ever pictured yourself in a business role? Because I know we both, or the three of us, have been in the creative industry for most of our career. Mm -hmm. Have you seen yourself in business business leadership position? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've just shifted into entrepreneurship over the last yeah. year. So for me, that CEO mindset sounds really intimidating. You know, I'm like, what is it? How do I get there? One really good source for me is podcasts. So, so to learn from these people, to kind of like act as a sponge, to, to understand how they got to where they're at. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember I was having a conversation with a friend. And I was like, I could never be an entrepreneur. I don't have the mindset for it. Couldn't be me. Mm. And he goes, but you are, though, because you do multiple different jobs. But you're an entrepreneur, but you are the product. So it depends mm. on how you think about it. Yeah. Um, but who would you say your inspiration is in business? Oh, I love what Stephen Bartlett's doing. He's an early investor for so many great startups. Um, and then how he kind of markets himself, you know, with the podcast, him himself as a brand, as a speaker. So definitely Stephen Bartlett for me. What about you, Louis? Oh, for me, it's a bit personal. My husband. Ah. Yeah, because my husband's an entrepreneur. He's had multiple businesses in the past. And, and I just like how he does it, not for the money, but to help people genuinely. Mm. I'm sure. Fadis has a, an inspiration as well. Yes, I do, and that inspiration is Nimi Mehta. But for <laughs> oh, right now, yeah. let's get someone else on the sofa. Let's find out who our guest co-host is for today. Hi, my name is Salih al -Brake. I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm very excited to be here, and I can't wait to see you later. Yes, we're very excited to have Salah join us right here in the studio in just a little bit. But before all of that, blending sustainable practices with culinary delights. Amy was lucky enough to check out Duangdi by Bolan to try some of their contemporary local delicacies, putting authentic ingredients at the forefront. Take a look at this. I'm Bo Duangkwon Songwisawa. And I'm Dylan Jones, and we're from Duangdi, Dubai. At Duangdi, we're serving Thai food. My passion is passing on Thai culinary heritage and eco gastronomy. And my passion is uncompromising Thai flavors. Today we're going to step into the world of Duangdi, a Thai restaurant that is the brainchild of husband and wife duo Chef Bo Song Visava and Chef Dylan Jones. This culinary concept blends together heritage and culinary finesse. So let's go check it out. So what inspired you to set up a new concept here in Dubai? Well, I really want to have my own restaurant since like ages ago. We stay true to our roots and we stay true to our philosophy. Our first priority as cooks is to give people great tasting, good food. We um, tell the story through the journeys of the whole meal. We, we try to avoid the word traditional when we're talking about our food. When it's designed properly, you will feel like, oh, I can actually be spicy. Yeah. And then you're going to enjoy Thai food a lot more. So do you have any favorite dishes that you enjoy cooking together? Any curry, he's like a curry king. Her palate is amazing and her complexity of flavors is amazing and whenever she does a relish. And I also love the fact that when she presents the plates, they're just stunning because she's got a real artistic flair when it comes to placing vegetables. Dongdi captures the essence of Thai cuisine, carefully crafted dishes that you wouldn't normally find outside of Thailand. But in Dubai, this is an amazing new culinary concept and one that definitely has to be experienced.
Wow, I think that's got us all hungry in the studio, but spicy food? Sign me up, absolutely. Uh, now back to the studio, our co-host today is an entrepreneur helping put homegrown concepts on the global map through his business ventures. Please welcome Salah Albrecht. Salah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Salah, I feel like, you know, we, we talk about the CEO mindset, you know, successful leadership, you've got there. But what I want to do is take you back to the very beginning because everyone has their own journey. Yep. Where did your entrepreneur mindset kind of start? Was it at a young age and, and who was your inspiration? So I'm the eldest of four boys and uh, I grew up with a father who was an entrepreneur his entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, he was an entrepreneur ever since he was uh, 25 and I, you know, when he turned 27 there I came along and so I've always had him kind of as a father figure but also as a role model to see how he navigated his CEO mindset mm -hmm. and I just remember every time they, they, they asked me what is it that I wanted to do when I grew up and I just said I just want to become an entrepreneur like him and so I learned from his failures and his successes and I kind of intertwined that into my own journey. I mean, speaking of those failures and successes, I want to know when you approach business, when you approach a new project, uh, do you do it with a calculated logical mind, numbers, ROIs, or is there a bit of passion involved? There's definitely passion involved. It has to have passion. So I always, whenever I come up with an idea or a friend of mine approaches me with an idea, all of my businesses that I run, I run with, I run with a partner. That I, I, I work better with teams. Uh, and the first thing I say is, do you love what you do? Or do you love the idea? Because if you don't love it, there's no passion behind it. It's not gonna fuel it to the next level. It might run, it might have a chance of succeeding, but if you're not passionate about it, that's like the secret sauce that makes it or breaks a business. I love that. Now, I know you started being an entrepreneur at the age of 21, yeah. quite young, but I'm guessing you got that from your father. But I know it hasn't been a smooth start for you. How many failures would you say? How many businesses, how many business ventures would you say didn't quite make it? More than half. Wow. <laughs> and that's, and that's, I think that's, a blessing in disguise because I learned things that I shouldn't I wouldn't have otherwise learned if I didn't have those failures um, there are some businesses that started and it must have been like me perhaps there are some reasons like the wrong timing um, the wrong partners that you have on board the wrong mindset that you go into the market also at some certain times where there was the crisis that happened globally there are so many factors that result in a business not making it but all that fuels into when it, you find something that does make it or does work, that's when you know that this is, this is all because of those failures that you went ahead. So people usually shy away from failures. I say embrace them. Mm. Salah, I mean, a lot of things that you do now, let's talk about the now. Uh, you know, you're so passionate about what you do, but there's always a purpose uh, behind every single venture that you have a hand in. Tell me about that and tell me what it is that you do at the moment. So currently, I, um, I always make fun and say I created a circular economy type of business, which is what I mean is, on the one side, me and my brother have a few F&B outlets here in Bahrain. So here's where we feed you and you kind of get the calories. Mm -hmm. On the other side, me and my best friend opened a, a gym here in Dubai. So that's where you burn those calories. Nice. So we have the best <laughs> formula of <laughs> formula working. But essentially where that came from is community. That's, that's the bottom line. We, through what better way than meeting and, and getting to know people and sharing memories over a plate of food? Mm -hmm. Where What better to grow with someone, to sometimes laugh or cry with someone than at a gym and a, and a class of yeah. community? So I think community was always the, the, the main focal point of our DNA whenever starting a business. So currently, I oversee Wakami, which is in Sofitel downtown, a Pan-Asian restaurant, uh, Gyoto, which is another Pan-Asian restaurant in Bahrain, and Gravity Calisthenics Gym, which is located in El Goz. And then a few, my hands are in a few other businesses, smaller businesses across the UAE. But those are the three flagships that we currently run. Amazing. Well, here's my question, Sarah, because a lot of people want to be entrepreneurs. It's an idea. It's something we told we should be, should want to be. Um, some people recognize that they don't have the mindset for it. But I feel like a lot of people say, I don't have the money for it. Yeah. And I have here in my notes that you started your first business with 10,000 dirhams. So is money really an obstacle if somebody really wants to be an entrepreneur? I think now you... Having said that, that was in 2010, right? So it's different now. At the moment now, we have so many government initiatives and private company initiatives that support young entrepreneurs. So it's from, even easier now, It's you even think? easier now, in my opinion, to go after what you want and seek the support from mentors, from companies, and from funds that are established in the UAE. It's very much about the entrepreneurial spirit right now. But back then, I had no clue as to what I was doing. Uh, my father was an entrepreneur, and he has a saying that 
I started from nothing, you should also learn the same way. And so I got a job as a graduate trainee and saved up until I knocked and I asked someone, how much does it cost to make a website and a logo mm -hmm. and all that? And they told me 10,000 dirhams at the time. And so as soon as I hit that 10,000 mark, I started it and it went on to, that first company went on to live for about four to five years. Uh, it was a boutique agency and we ended up getting awarded by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum for uh, the community segment as a youth category for giving back to the community. From you a started that at 21 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But going back to what Faris was saying earlier, how you started with your own savings of 10,000 dirhams, would you recommend for somebody who's just starting out to go all out with all their savings or would they rather play around with somebody else's <laughs> money? <laughs> There's no right answer to that okay. because in my opinion, it depends on the type of risk taker you are. For me, which is one of the reasons I, I, I said I prefer to go in with partners, not just because I appreciate the camaraderie and that I, I feel like two brains are better than one, uh, but I do feel like when you come in from an investment perspective, I personally don't usually like to enter businesses alone from a financial aspect. So I feel like if you're maybe a little more risk averse, then it's always best to get partners who can assist you with that. If you're looking for investors and you know uh, uh, angels to kind of support you, angel investors, that's also a way to go. Uh, but if you are a risk taker and you want to go all in, it's completely up to you. But sometimes they say, you know, the bigger the risk, the harder the fall. So I always, I would say from my personal experience, always look to kind of equalize that and have some, an even playing field so that in case it does not work, you can you know, start up or, or refresh or go back to the drawing board and use that investment to go, you know, back into the game. Mm. Uh, Salah, it's, it's my first year of entrepreneurship. I'm, I'm kind of finding my feet as I'm going. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I'm really conscious about is my approach to leadership, especially if you're managing teams and you, you've got people around you. Yeah. When they say it's not personal, it's business, I don't believe that because my business is very personal to me. What are your thoughts on that? So I have a saying by my business partners, they always say I'm good cop and they're bad cop. Mm -hmm. uh, I would call myself an emotional leader. I lead with my heart mm -hmm. um, and what I feel like is the business when you grow it because it's so personal to you, you have to integrate that to, to make it feel that the staff with you and the employees with you feel like it's their baby too mm -hmm. and that's something that they're growing with you. So I was always someone who kept on kind of feeding that you know, of maybe fatherly energy and caretaker energy of we're in this together, we're gonna do this together, uh, we're gonna grow together and it's our future for, for, for everything. So I, I, I feel like when you have something that's so personal to you, it's hard to do that. But I do admit that my business partners have taught me that at some times you have to put that business hat on, you have to have those difficult quest you know, mm -hmm. questions or difficult conversations with some of your staff members, which comes as a byproduct. But I always lead first with my heart, so yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad. Salah, I can't believe we just started the show. I feel like we've touched on so much already, yeah. but please stick around because we've got some amazing guests coming to join us later on. Speaking of which, coming up, we discuss how happiness is the new marker for success with the team at Happiness Matters. So stay with us here on DXB Today.